Well, Mr. Obsolete here. Well, today's little chore is to make a workstation for making chainsaw chains. Since I'm thrifty or cheap, whichever you prefer, uh, instead of going to the saw shop all the time and getting chains made and charge a lot, you have to, you know, you got to make money. So I decided to break down and get all my own stuff. So I started out with a piece of 1x12 here and I cut it to match the edge of the table. And I put a piece of leather here. I'll use a vise to pinch it, but I'll put a piece of metal over to protect it when I do that. I've drilled the pilot holes there for the bolts to hold them. So this is a chain breaker here. If you look closely, you can see that little point here. That pushes the rivet out of the chain. And you use this little vise here to hold the chain. And like I say, it pushes the rivet out and then when we're ready to put it back together this is called a rivet spinner and the chain comes across here you put the link in here to repair it and you use this to adjust it and you spin this and it mashes the rivet out and you continue to tighten it a little bit until you get a complete stoppage on the rivet so what we're going to be using today going to need to drill these out but what we're going to do also is on the back side here the bolts that I'm using are carriage bolts and have a rounded head on them and stuff and so what I'm going to do on these holes here I'm gonna countersink them a bit to push this down in so that it won't be rocking when it's down tight and so I'll get the tools ready for that and be right back Okay, well we're getting ready to do the countersinks here. I'm going to be using a fantastic old tool. So it's called a bracing bit. It's for drilling holes. These bits have a screw center to pull it into the wood. And they have a cutter tooth here and here. And the very edge that cuts the circle. These really leave a really nice hole. Much better than a drill bit. Much cleaner. So I've measured the head on this. I need to go down about a quarter of an inch. So get busy here. There, I've got to go just a little teeny bit deeper, but you can see that really nice clean edges here. That's a fantastic old tool. That's way old also. Anyway, I'll get the other set and we'll be back in a bit. Okay, well we cut the first mount all set and stuff. I wanted to talk about the brace and bit a little bit. This is a company that says Pexto. Something I'm not familiar with. It's a Pexto number 112 made in the U.S don't know the year but the company is still in business today and research on it they started in 1797 making tinsmith machines that were used to replace hand tools in tinsmithing and that's what they still do today uh, they merged with other companies down the road there in the 1890s they acquired some hand tool companies and I'm sure this is a came from that group at some point it's probably 30s or 40s maybe even 50s but has a ratchet built into it so that you can move the handle like this and then you rotate this knob that ratchets back the other direction really amazing how smart people used to be and then the bits are kind of interesting the tops are kind of a pyramid shape and the jaws have a groove in them they pinch here and then they also lock here so it's can't move at all it's solid so you cut a perfectly straight hole with them every time really great old tool so what we're gonna do gonna mount this on here like so and once I put the nuts and washers on here and tighten it up it'll pull up the heads down further into the wood there so it'll be flush
probably made in China. Anyway, I wanted to talk just a little bit about tools. We're going to use this snap-on end wrench here to tighten these up. But is there a time not to be cheap? And there is for me, that's when you buy tools. I always bought the best tools they could afford, even if the price was outrageous like these. It's crazy what the dumb prices are today on this stuff. But I've been using this for more than 40 years and it's never broken or wore out. Now, unfortunately, the new snap-on tools aren't near as good as the old ones. In fact, I refer to them as snap-off because the ratchet and stuff break all the time. And the jaws, if you put a load on, will spread here because the metal isn't as good. But these old ones are fantastic. There again, if you pay more to begin with and use it for your working life, it's cheap. So anyway, we'll get these tightened up and we'll be back. Okay, we got it mounted. Boat bolts have pulled into the wood, no rock at all. See how nice recess that is. Same with these. So we'll put the rivet spinner on here. So all I can do is tighten it up and here again using our fantastic snap-on end wrench. So this will be the first part of this video. When we get back, we'll actually make a new chain. I'll show you how to take one apart and put one together. Be back after a bit. Welcome back. Well, we've got our chain breaker and chain maker here that I built. And so that's going to be what we're going to do today. I'm going to make a chain like this. This is a Oregon number 72 chisel bit skip tooth. Even though it cuts good, it's wore out. It's got tons of movement in the side and the drive teeth are worn. And if you look close, you can see the teeth here. Every one is different size, which doesn't really make any difference. I've seen a lot of videos say you have to cut each one exactly, but it's BS because all I have to do is have them sharp, but this is way to the end, and so we're going to uh, make a new chain for it. <clears throat> so the first thing we have is our breaker here. Now these are sold by Oregon, the same company that makes the chain, but uh, they don't make them obviously, and usually I would find some vintage ones, but I couldn't find any good ones anywhere, so. The last chain that I had made cost me $42 and a couple before that were in a $30 to $40 range also so I have a chain for the common stuff so the stuff I don't have I'll have to have get a roll of it but this investment here is basically $130 and so you know four or five chains and you have it and you can do it whenever you want to do it. So. I've counted the links and then I've marked these. These are the rivets we're going to take out. And so there's a little vise here that holds the chain. So we get that mounted here. And whenever you do this, you want to put just a little teeny drop of oil on there just to make it work better. The one thing on these, it came with two tips, which means to me that it's medium quality. It's probably not the best in the world, so you got to be careful you have this centered. So we'll get this under here, get it centered, just like so. And the other thing we need to put on here is I have a piece of leather here to protect the wood. I have a piece of metal to put over it, this. And then I can use the C-clamp on it to hold it in place. And I can move it around to different spots if I need to, but this way it'll keep it from rocking. Okay, well, let's see what happens here. Okay, 
Okay, we're taking rivet right out. Now we'll need to do this one here next, and that way we can take the link off. Being a little finicky here, there. Trying to get this link in the right place here. They'll be back in a second when I have it set. There we are. So we get this all set up and get the rivet spinner ready to go and be right back. Okay, we'll get the chain on here. So we'll take this piece here, we'll take the repair link and put it through, it has the rivet on it. And then we also need to put the face plate on here too, but we want to have both ends on here, like that. And so that's what the link will look like. Put it in there. Okay, well we're ready to rivet it together. The link here, if you can see it or not, has a cutout on the bottom here. That always goes down towards the drive tooth. So we've got the end here. We put the master part and make sure that the part's down. And then we'll put the other end on here also. I'll try to keep this in the grooves here to keep things aligned. I'll put the plate on here like so so we'll move that right into the jaw here and we'll start to tighten this up it's got to be centered here so as soon as I get that done we'll be right back <laughs> okay it's all lined up here there again want to use this a little drop of oil on here makes them last a lot longer this puts tension against the rivet face, so we want to get that a little bit of tension on it. And then we'll start to spin this and keep tightening it, moving it in. So we feel a point where there's a lot of resistance here, so let's take a look and see. He's got a nice rivet on there, so we'll do the other side here. Be right back when we're done. Okay, well, we got it done. You can see the rivets right here. They're a little bigger than the other rivets, and that holds it really good. You've got to make sure everything's flexible and moves, and there's no side to side on it. That came out great. So, what we're going to do is, that'll be the end of the video for today, but our next video, we're going to be installing a new chain and doing a bar service and a clutch service and a general service on the chainsaw it goes on. So stay tuned. Remember, vintage is always good. Sometimes you have to buy something newer. <laughs>